For the past three months, I have bounced around six different countries in Southeast Asia as a full-time digital nomad, spending between two and four weeks in each location at a time. And this is a lifestyle that is glamorized a lot. Everyone I know tells me, oh, you must be living the dream lives. You have the life that everyone dreams about. But in this video, I'm gonna give you the real truth. The actual reality of being a digital nomad, including many downsides of this lifestyle that I have not heard that many people talk about, and that you simply won't know unless you try this yourself. And I'm doing this so that after watching this video, you can have a realistic understanding of what it's actually like to be a digital nomad to see if this lifestyle could be right for you. Now to understand the first reason, take a look at this. This is the desk that I am working with here in this apartment in Kuala Lumpur. And this desk is extremely small, which just makes getting work done quite difficult. And that's the first point. Getting work done as a digital nomad is quite difficult. And not just because the desks are not that good. There's so many reasons or just being in a routine and getting work done is just not as easy when you're a digital nomad. What I always find is that where my best work gets done is when I'm in periods of multiple weeks or even multiple months, just in this like what people call monk mode, where the only thing I'm really focused on is work. And when you're constantly traveling, you're constantly you're thinking about what to do in new locations. What is this location like? Where am I gonna go next? The space in your mind is being taken up by all these different things, rather than being focused on the one thing that matters, which is your work. Now, of course, I'm not saying you have to be this hustle bro, but the only thing you're ever thinking about is work, but in the long run, for most of the time, if you wanna achieve your goals, you wanna be fulfilled, really build a big business, you can't constantly be traveling. And this is just the first reason why you cannot do this forever. And there's many other practical reasons as well. Like for example, I don't have my monitor. I'm just working from this laptop monitor in here. In Dubai, I have my big mega expensive Apple monitor that I use. I can't really travel with that. I'm constantly packing and unpacking, which again, it just takes time. My suitcase is right there. When I leave this place to go to the next one, I'm gonna be packing, unpacking. And wherever you go to a new location, you sort of lose two to three days. You lose like the last day in the last location, the first couple of days in the next location as you're like unpacking, getting in the routine. Now this can be mitigated by really just focusing your mind on like, okay, even though I'm in this new location, I'm just gonna try to get a routine as fast as possible. And then you can obviously get in your routine. Right now I'm here in Kuala Lumpur for a month. And the only thing I'm pretty much doing here is just working. And it's not that bad. Like I can get stuff done, but you just need to be mindful of just not getting stuck in this holiday mode constantly. If you don't do that, you can get like 90% of the effort done, but it's still not gonna be optimal. Before we go on to the next one, if you wanna keep up with with new things happening in the offshore world around being a digital nomad, living in different countries, around different residencies, about lowering your taxes, then I have started a free newsletter. So if you wanna stay up to date with all of that, I highly recommend that you subscribe to it. The link is gonna be down below in the description. And of course, if you don't like the content, you can always unsubscribe with one click anytime you want. That link will be down below. And now let's move on to the next one. Now, the second harsh reality is that it makes health and fitness also more difficult. Now, I'm someone who's quite obsessive about my health. I love tracking my calories. I track my weight. I track my workout. I work out at the gym like six days a week. Now, again, how hard or difficult all of this is to do as a digital nomad is gonna depend on how long you're staying in each location. But no matter what, all of these parts of tracking your health, being healthy are going to be more difficult as a digital nomad. So here in my building, for example, in this apartment in Kuala Lumpur, I have a gym that is pretty good. It's actually very good. It allows me to do all the workout that I can. But the issue is, is that I can't properly track my weights because at every gym, even though they might have the same machines, the machines are going to be slightly different. The way they're weighted are going to be slightly different. Eating healthy can be more difficult. Now, of course, in every location, you're going to have healthy options apart from the Philippines. The Philippines Philippines made eating healthy quite difficult because the food there is just not that healthy in general. But in most locations, if they're reasonably developed, like Malaysia, Thailand, Bali, they're gonna have healthy options. But again, you're probably ordering out a lot. You're probably eating out a lot, which means tracking the food, tracking the calories is gonna be more difficult and finding sort of the foods you like. It's again, gonna take a bit of time. It's gonna take a bit of time to get into routine when it comes to eating. And also because of staying in a location, let's say for three weeks, in that three weeks, you're gonna wanna try out 
out all the different foods, all the different amazing restaurants, because you're like, well, I'm only here for a couple of weeks, so I want to try all the amazing desserts and the delicacies that this place has to offer, which again makes it more difficult to stick to a healthy diet because you have this FOMO all the time. Now, the next point is that this is probably going to be more expensive than you think. Now, you're probably thinking that, okay, I'm going to be a digital nomad in Thailand, in Vietnam, in uh, Malaysia. It's super cheap. I'm going to spend such little money. And sure, you can do that. But if you're not careful, you're going to end up spending a lot more money than you think. And this is exactly what's happened to me. But the thing is, if you have money, you're not going to end up taking the super cheap Airbnb that you perhaps looked at before you came. You're going to end up looking, oh, I can get this luxury apartment for only this amount of money. And you're going to end up getting that. You're probably going to end up spending more money on food. What ends up happening a lot to me is that I'm in this super cheap restaurant in Thailand. And then because it's so cheap, I just end up instead of getting one portion of food, I just get two portions because I'm like, well, this is like nothing. So then the bill, while still cheaper, ends up being quite close to what I would pay in Dubai. And also when you're in these locations and you're thinking, okay, I'm only here for four weeks, you're in this state of mind where you sort of have this FOMO that I just mentioned, where you're going to feel like I need to do all the things that I can do in this location, because who knows when I'm going to come back to Phuket. So you're just going to do all the things like you're just going to want to get all the stuff off your list while you're there. And the costs are going to end up adding up and you're going to end up in a situation like where I was, where I ended up spending $7,000 in a month in the Philippines, which is more than I would spend in Dubai. Short term rentals are going to be more expensive. If you looked at like the average monthly rentals in Kuala Lumpur, you're probably going to pay more than that because you're only renting for one month. You're going to want to have travel insurance. I have travel insurance. If you want to use the travel insurance that I have, there's going to be an affiliate link down below. You're going to want to have roaming data. Now I've actually found a really good app that I use that where you can get eSIMs in any of these countries for very, very cheap, like $20 for like pretty much unlimited data. I buy one in every country that I go to. So I don't have to use roaming data on my Dubai SIM plan. So that actually ends up being extremely cheap. If you want to use the same one, I'm going to leave that link down below in the description. But things like gyms are going to cost more because you're only getting the subscription for one month or only two weeks. So I'm not saying that you have to be this like budget backpacker, bro. Like I don't believe that that is what anyone should be trying to do. You should be trying to make so much money that you don't really have to worry about this cost. Like that's pretty much how I live. But the point here is that unless you're careful, like it's probably going to cost more than you think. Now, the next one is you're sort of constantly looking forward to the next location. That is something that I've realized in any location that I'm in, I tend to start watching YouTube videos about the next location that I'm about to go to about the researching the apartments there sort of looking forward to the next location rather than living in the moment and enjoying the location where you are right now. Now this hasn't been a big issue. It's just sometimes I caught myself sort of doing this sort of not focusing on the place where I'm now, just like thinking about the next place. What am I going to do at the next location? Sort of glamorizing the next place I was going to go to. So these are sort of the harsh realities, the things that you don't consider and the reasons why a lifestyle can this can really never be a long-term solution. Now, maybe it can for someone. Obviously, different things work for other people. But if you are an entrepreneur, you're really focused on your future. At some point, you're going to realize that this is really not going to be optimal for your goals. And you're also going to really sort of get tired of that constant traveling, constantly getting on flight, booking flights, going to the new location, not really having a routine, not really establishing a base. So this is not going to be a long term solution for most people. The thing that sort of overrides all of these reasons that's the reason why I have done this. And I would still despite all of this recommend everyone try this is the fifth thing that I'm about to talk about, which is that you learn a lot about what you like and what you don't like. The thing about this lifestyle of like living around the world, living in different locations, different people like different places. And I can't possibly tell you you what you're going to like. Like you can do research online and you can form hypotheses about what you might like, what kind of places might be right for you, but you can never know for sure unless you try the different places. I think there are like three places that I really like based on the travels right now. Dubai is one of them and I'll tell you in future videos what the other places are. That next year perhaps I'm going to start just rotating around those three places and technically still being a digital nomad but like a slow mad, slow digital nomad where perhaps I spent four, five, six months up to eight months in a one place and then move to the next location that is going to get the best of both worlds it's going to allow me to mix up my life have different vibes throughout the year without disturbing the routine too much and the purpose of doing this crazy travel is really to find those places what are those places for you maybe it's just one place maybe it's two places maybe it's four places that you really want to divide your time between and then you can just spend your time in those places but in order to find those places you first have to try a bunch of places out and you might be surprised about what places you like for example right now i'm here in kuala lumpur i fully 
expected that this could be one of those places that I really like, but I've actually figured out like while I don't obviously hate it, it's probably not at the top of my list. And this is something that I was surprised by. Whereas there was another location that I fully didn't expect to like, but after spending time there, I actually realized that I really, really like it. Now, a lot of you will be saying, yes, I'd really love to live this lifestyle, but I cannot do it. I don't have an online income. How can I become a digital nomad? Well, I actually made this video right here where I go through the five best ways that I've seen myself and the people around me get into this lifestyle where you can make a bunch of money online while living this laptop lifestyle around the world. So if you want to find that out and you're interested, go watch that video next and I'll see you in the next one.